What's up, everybody? Welcome to our weekly Q&A. Uh, today we're doing things a little bit different. We're actually doing them live. Uh, I'm going to move the window where I can see our feed. Um, what's up, Trevor? Trevor will be here for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? Um, I accidentally clicked the notification. All right. Oh, Sarah! What's hi, up, Sarah? Sarah? So we're saying hi to Sarah. It's going to be a little bit of the delay <laughs> before she sees it. Okay, so let's, uh, I guess we can get things started. So yeah. this is going to be a Q&A for um, Season 4, Episode 1, The Anathaphene. This is going to be full of spoilers. Um, so, yeah. Sorry if you jump into this and uh, you're really you know behind on the show, but it's had a couple thousand downloads since this point, so I figure most of the fan base is, has seen it at this yeah. point. So um, I guess what I can also do real quick before we get too deep into this, here's my phone, is I will share this on the uh, Facebook page. Mm. So we've had a busy weekend. We had our daughter's birthday party. Yep. Which was a... Reptile theme party for our seven-year-old. Yeah, it was a it was a success. That was it was really fun. Hey, there we are. Share. I'm gonna share this. Come see, bastard. <laughs> Ramsey. Uh, and then I guess I'll be a little bit more polite on our page. This is always the interesting part of live yeah. videos. We're going to get to the questions momentarily, I promise. Well, we... Uh, whoops. <laughs> Spoiler talk. Season 4, episode 1. Spoiler tour. That's why you don't use voice to text. Well, you know. So anyway, what were you saying? I was saying, and we ended up with a new family member. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our, our new tortoise. Yep. He is a Herman tortoise, so we named him Munster. Yep. Herman Munster. Now I got the song in my head. Do, 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 and do, the kids do. have no clue what we're like, talking about. Who the hell is it? What's a Herman <laughs> Munster? Why don't we name him something else? <laughs> All right. For everybody that's not involved in the Facebook happenings, we'll... Uh, download this video and re-upload it as the fourth live stream. So if you have any questions, we do have the uh, the Scarred Ones uh, chat open. So if you join the Scarred Ones group where the live video is coming from, camera's here, uh, <laughs> where the live video is coming from, we should be able to answer your questions as they appear. But we already have some preset questions that people had asked earlier. Yeah. So um, I guess we'll get those started. Uh, dun, dun, dun. You want to open that guy up? Make sure how bad the lag is on this real quick. See, three people are watching. Oh, wow. Said that a little bit ago. Cool. So, buckle in. Yep. So, instead of our cool little when we do our edited Q&As, we got this guy. So, our first question comes from Ana Valdez. Uh, what do you mean when Joey and Harper talk about fighting the dead? Are there zombies in Doc's forces now? <gasps> zombies. Oh, is it going to do it? Uh, uh, uh. There it goes. That's our little whoosh. <laughs> 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 Mess with the lighting. Uh, and and then uh, Maya Zapita kind of followed up to that comment. Ooh, there it goes. We'll hold that there for a few seconds. All right. Uh, and she basically said the DE and Doc um, are basically uh, the, the DE and Doc are essentially because of the new developments between Doc and Vima, their forces are now collectively the dead, an acronym. I think he explained in the episode, but it currently escapes me. Is this correct, Johnny? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but Anna's question does still uh, hold some hold some other things because they're literally at an airport looking through the shattered glass at the uh at some undead mm -hmm. workers on a plant so yeah um the the dark elite and those guys what was the actual question 
Uh, Harper talks about fighting the dead. Are there zombies in Doc's forces now? Yes. yes. So uh, they are bringing zombies from this, the realm of Scary to help them with their uh, their war. They're raging on the um, the war. The good guys, the, the Templar and and Malak. All right. This is so much funner because we're not being able to edit this. I love this kind of thing. So who's our next question from? Our next question comes from Rose. Always. Will the hunting and fishing trip ever happen? See if I can get this over. All right, here we go. Just hold it. There. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I'm at a weird different angle. There we go. Oh, yeah. This is fun. All right, so (laughs) we're going to put the poll up. You guys, whether our edited Q&As or our live Q&As, they're going to be like, your edited ones, please. For the love of God. Um, so, yeah, the uh, hunting and fishing trip that's referenced as a joke at the end of that scene. Um, that originally, uh, we were going to do five seasons. Yes. And when we started planning all this stuff out, there was going to be this quest between uh, Joey and um, Harper mm-hmm. to find out if this really was Eddie and... That kind of thing. But instead, we decided to, you know, hit you guys right in the groin at the beginning with telling you, yeah, the monster is Eddie. <gasps> what? <laughs> so, um, no, the uh, unfortunately, the hunting and fishing trip is uh, alluded to, but is not actually, we don't see it in the mm-hmm. in the episode. Um, but as our show goes, we can always go back and, uh, you know, do whatever we want. Yep. If we get enough demand for it, we can write an episode. Hey, there's Gary. Gary joined. (laughs) Gary was a victim of the monster. (laughs) He's on his way home. All right, what we got now? All right, next question comes from Duncan McPherson. Very interesting to learn about Joey's abilities as a seer. Will we learn more about Joey's newfound talent? All right, we'll answer that question first. I'm going to see if I can hold it down. Look at that. Up, up, up. Look at that. I didn't even spoil his second question. <laughs> um, yeah, they uh, they alluded to a little bit um, in season three mm-hmm. about him becoming a seer. And I think that we're going to learn a lot more about uh, yes. Joey Trauma's powers in this season. So the short answer is yes. Yep. All right. So what's the second question? Crazy to hear what's happening to Eddie Vile. Can you describe what exactly he's been going through since we last saw him? All right, so you know he's got a second question. We're going to keep holding it up every time. but um, Describe what we, he's been going through since yes. we last saw him. Well, he is the monster, so he killed Gary Scales' character. <laughs> he, uh, he, he, he cut some people up in a cabin. Uh-huh. Um, I think... Um, they kind of alluded to it a little bit in the conversation, but yeah, he's just been trying to grasp who he was. Going to all of his old stomping grounds. And uh, reflecting on what he used to be and trying to, I guess, level with what he's become. Hope that answered your question. And another one from Rose. Okay. Is there anything left of the real eddie at this point no i don't think there really is i don't know i think that can be debated okay as we move forward yeah what why would you say i can't no i mean like based on where we are up to this point um i mean other than visiting the places that he used to be from but he's not i mean i would assume i guess that what does you mean by real eddie a real Eddie, I would think, would be like, but I haven't even got nothing for my doggy bag. You know, I mean, that was Eddie, um, you know. Uh, is that guy still there right now as the anathathene? Probably not as um, snarky. I don't think word. he has any <laughs> any sense of humor at this moment. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's just choking people. Right he has now, no so. dialogue, really, at this point, except for, no, I'm a, a, mo- a monster. <laughs> So I don't think there's anything of the real Eddie right now in this in this creature. Um, I mean, all he's doing is grunting back and forth when uh, Lena and his dad are talking yeah. to him in his head. He's not conversating with them. So I don't think 
I think he's got some kind of mental disconnect, possibly, with them. Possibly. All right, moving right along. Hey, if you're uh, watching this live and you see this part, type something in the chat so we, we can see if the chat's working. Because right now it looks like all it's showing is when people join. Um, and that's it. I just typed something myself. I just told us hi. Hi, Johnny. Um, anyway. Oh, I can pin a comment. That's cool. Lots of spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Yeah. Try to type at an angle that I don't knock the computer over because of what we have it set on. All right. So I can hit that, and then can I pin that one? Yay! This is getting fancy. All right. Mm. Hey! Cool. Robert, say oh. hello. So hello. That helps. Okay, cool. All okay. Right. So what's the next question? So now moving on. How much of Eddie <laughs> is still Eddie, mentally wise and physically speaking? And this was asked by Bill Armentrout. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of worry towards uh, Eddie. Yes. So, um... Yeah, I guess just reference a few minutes ago when we answered Rose's question. They're kind of similar, but uh, physically, we really don't know right now. No, we don't. Christina's artwork was just super vague. Why didn't you get more detailed, Christina? Hi. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on. I mean, I don't really tell us anything. So the artwork for this episode is the Anathavine, mm -hmm. as, uh, as imagined by Christina. So that's kind of cool. Um. I would just say, physically speaking, stay tuned. Yeah. We're going to go there. We'll get into more detail about it. Yeah. All right. All right. This is from you, Sarah. Huh? Okay. And you ask, Miss Sarah, I'm dying to know, will Eddie Viles, original voice actor, be rep reprising his role as Eddie Viles slash the Anatha Fiend? That is the original voice actor yes. playing the monster uh -huh. right now. So that is uh, that is Eddie Vile the man playing Eddie Vile the character as Eddie Vile the Anathophy. Yes. <laughs> Not to get confusing or anything. Um. So the uh yeah that that's him. He's 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 taking a towel when he's in the booth, and he's kind of chunk thrown on it. And then he channeled a. Cockroach man from Men in Black. Oh, yeah. That was his yeah, uh, yeah. sugar water. Like, that was his, <laughs> his <laughs> more sugar. Like, he'd sit there and do uh, Men in Black lines and then go into the oh, 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 monster. Ah! It's just all the effects on him. We should have. We wanted to, like, show you guys some, like, raw video of him doing that character, but then we just spoiled it. Yep. Um, we even. Uh, so, yeah, we haven't been able to, like, List him as anything. Yeah, he's D, or... yeah, D F, D E free or something like something that. We like did that. we we did some weird credit listing for him for episode one, uh, but we will be uh, the future Anathafines will have his yeah his normal Cats character. Out of the yeah, bag. yeah, Eddie Vile as the Anathafine. So good, good question. Okay, another one from Duncan. I heard some Star Wars references in the Anatha theme. Can you discuss how this episode was influenced by a galaxy far, far away? Nothing we do is influenced by Star Wars. How dare you? Ever. Ever. And no, he did not go into a toy store and buy that for himself, not for our children. We got children? <laughs> Oh, we had children so I could buy Star Wars toys and oh, have them in my house. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of Star Wars references in this episode. And I think Brandon Greer caught them all. I think so. So our next comment, not question, is kind of a answers a little bit of what Duncan says. So Brandon Greer, we'll, oh, give, yeah, we'll give him the... Uh, I got some Star Wars references. Eddie is more machine than man. That's not actually said, but uh, did something pop up over here in the comments? Sorry. My... Oh, crap. Ah, hashtag Eddie Vile Crush. I love it. <laughs> love it. Um, if it lets me love it. It let me like it. 
but I love it. All right, so, um, yeah, I mean, he's he. Uh, my inspiration for him was General Grievous. Yeah. I guess I can let that out of the bag now. Uh huh. Um, some almost warrior-like person that has just been with this, like fighting for his group. And then is taken and by another faction and completely turned into something else. Which, if you don't know the history of General Grievous, he was an insectoid thing. And then uh, Dooku and the uh, Siths and all that got a hold of him and made him General Grievous. So that was my my idea. But the question still remains, did he go willingly or was he taken by the USG? We still have not answered that. I mean, we know. I mean. Uh, Theobald says uh, yeah that's <laughs> Theobald says things that uh, uh, basically talks about uh, the channel to con- uh, the ability to control the soul fire uh, has only been done by one person which is referencing Palpatine's uh, uh, basically the things to, uh, some would consider unnatural that's very influenced by that moment in Attack of the Clones uh, and then the Templars are essentially stormtroopers in their ivory armor. Kind of. Um, it's more like the uh, the Republic Jedi armor is kind of what I imagine them in. Because, I mean, obviously they don't have masks on as much. Um, but I do imagine them having, like, the City of Morstan badge. Like, over here, like, uh, Obi-Wan had the, the Jedi. Mm-hmm. I kind of imagine that with that white-plated armor. And then them having some kind of almost, like, issued blade. That can like run through the the metal of the uh, of the havoc units and the chaos units and yeah. things like that, but um, yeah, where the the where the stormtroopers were more modeled after the SS and those kind of things, mm-hmm. what Lucas was going for, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not channeling that on mine, but and then Jonathan Gilbert, uh, there it goes. It basically said just finished it. I must say, Cyberside working with the Templars just feels like. Uh, Johnny and Joey are going to execute Order 66. At so, any moment. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty good. All right. So, speaking of space, Bill Armentrout. Uh, Bill Armentrout. The DE on the moon, will that be coming back? Will the dead figure out how to get there? Uh, and either way, will there be laser blasters? Um, well, we know that the Dark Elite is on the moon. Yes. That's all um, I as far as uh, that was referenced last season, um, that's where Ivar is at. Uh, and we know that at the end of three, she was sending drones there and they would just be Disappear. destroyed, be dis- mm-hmm. disappeared. That's comes to where we're at. Uh, I think, I think right now, but it seems like the dead, the darkly acolyte disciples, are more focused on earthbound yeah. things at the moment. But if we got the space, maybe maybe Ivar has developed some some laser blasters. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> He's smart, dude. This is not auto scrolling. No, it's not. All right, so. Uh, you want to take Maya's question? Maya asked, was the liquid, liquefied souls all along, is that where the torment comes from? They're being taken over by the souls of someone else? I don't know how much of this we, can we go into this yet. I mean, he talks about, uh, I kind of let the cat most out of the bag in this episode. For the most Because he says we're going to have to... F- we can take a soul, we can liquefy it, and imbue it into you. Uh-huh. And then now you'll be able to use its knowledge, its energy, its memories, and those kind of things. Yeah, because then she says, can that process go wrong? And now we know where the liquid episodes mm-hmm. came from. That was an inexperienced hydromancer working with them, whoever that was. But, um, yeah. So, I guess that's the answer. Did we answer that question? I think so. Let me see that question again. I just want to make sure. They're being taken over by the soul of someone else. Kind of. They're more like using the soul of someone else. It's like using the soul of someone as a jacket. Like you're putting that on. Or better, a pair of sunglasses. You're putting that on because now you can still see. But now you're seeing through that. Mm-hmm. And using it in your mind. It's like Google Glass. Only people use it. 
That was a joke. Was that a joke? All right. Brandon Greer again. Are vampires anathema proof? If so, Theobald turning Vima would make for an awesome twist to the final season and a way for her to connect with Rima once again. Yes, no, and maybe so. So, uh, are vampires anathema proof? Yes. What types of vampires are there in our universe and how do they work? To be de continued. Yeah. To be determined. Um, there's more than one type of vampire in our, in our, in our lore. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. I mean, Theobald turning Vima into something, but seeing as Vima's, like, scared to just get a scar on her chest, I don't know how much she'd be open to somebody, like, biting into her and feeding her blood, and she, I don't know. So we'll see. As far as her being able to connect with Rima again, if she was a vampire, no. Rima's gone. Mm -hmm. Rima was, uh synthesized out her blood was used to make acolytes yep. and her skeleton was thrown outside the hive for the sun to destroy the evidence i think all that was referenced in the end of season yes. two so, no more rima i mean i guess if she died in enough pain her soul might have gone to scary maybe but if they made it quick on her then she would have been banished to hell so there'd be no way for for I mean, she's been murdering people constantly. She's going to heaven. So, <laughs> going there. and we, we shut the soul lock so you can't get to hell. Yeah. So. You ain't finding your sister again. Boo hoo. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know what's going on here with the chat. Oh, Anna just joined. Hi. Hi. All right. We had your question earlier. Sorry. You're going to have to wait till it's over and go back. Alberto de Jesus. Uh, skip one? No. Nope. If there was a throwback character to bring back, who would it be and why? Ooh. Blackjack 9. Joking. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, bring Mervyn, back? Yeah, like... Mad Mervyn would be if we brought... If, I guess if there was a throwback character to bring back, who would it be and why? I would assume, I would assume a character like from the original series or original somebody that we lost. Okay. Um, I guess that's what he's getting at on that question. I mean, it's the final season, if you're going to reference. Mm -hmm. um, like, did anyone disappear and we just haven't heard from them? Or did, you know, I mean, in this world, I mean, technically, you could bring Blackjack 9 back from Scary or something. Yeah, I guess technically. Um, I would probably say Matthew Finnis' boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, don't, don't mock them. <laughs> we're gonna say Who's your Frankie. At, Frankie, oh, okay. grown up. <laughs> yeah, Frankie is a little bit older. I mean, yeah. he, he wouldn't be totally grown yet. He'd be a few no. years older. He'd be like an adolescent at this point. Yeah, my uncle he killed my mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> left her body in the house. <laughs> I'm doing okay in the orphanage. Uh, he also asked, what was the most gut-wrenching story to tell so far? As far as painfulness, I, it's got to be Harper's Kids in the Field. Yeah. That That's one. mine. I think that was the most brutal, just heart-wrenching man. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, Finnis, Finnis eating it sucks. But he gets ripped open. It's pretty quick. Yeah. And uh, it's hard because it was a, a cliffhanger. But um, oh, those kids in the field, man. And then just the way it it he's he ends up killing him as a rotandan. That whole arc. Uh, yes. Is very gut wrenching. Like I think it's the most painful arc mm -hmm. for me. Anyway, what's yours? I don't know. That's a really good one. And then when um, he eventually has to use, you know, do the whole set the soul lock yeah. and realizes after he's fired, yeah, he wanted to die so badly. You should have just asked. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Thank you for setting me free. Oh crap! He starts seeing like the probably the the evilness fade from his face and like uh -huh. all the rotandan look start turning back to like a more of a younger version of what he probably looked like when he was younger. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, that one was hard. Good question, though. Carlos joined. 
Carlos Garcia. Right. Right. All right. So, Waylon McKenzie, voice of Waylon Mercury. Oh, you got it. Got it. He asked, will teaming up with Malik and the Templars make enough of a difference? Ellipses. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. The next question is, are we going to have to wait long to see some fighting action? That's from Rose. Waylon's like, why'd you script my question? <laughs> uh, light's not working. Sorry. And then Bill asked, how hard is shit about to hit the fan? And he put an isolating fan gif, and then I added poop emojis to it. Because... Why not? Maybe. Uh, there we go. So... Whoop. So, yeah. How hard is shit about to hit the fan? Is it really going to be enough? Are we about to start seeing some fighting? All of the above... Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, season four. I so. think season four is bigger than anything we've done. Yeah. Um, Writing-wise, production-wise, sound effects, um, all the above. We're definitely ending it on a very high note. Yeah, or a low note, depending on how you feel. I guess so. Yeah. I if, you're, if you're really wanting the world to end and it didn't, you'd be kind of disappointed. Right? I guess. If you were really, really not wanting the world to end and then it does, you'd be disappointed. <laughs> Depending on whatever the fuck we do. <laughs> Just keep listening. Is there laser blasters? <laughs> That's all that matters. Uh, all right, so we're going to hang around for a few more seconds here on the uh, the live feed. Is there anybody wanting to say anything? Anybody out there? I know there's a delay, so we'll wait just a mo moment. See what's going on on this side. We're looking at each other in the past. That's kind of funny. I know. It is kind of weird. Right? The whole delay thing. That was the laser blaster's comment. <laughs> it's like now we're doing commentary on, on our old one. All right. Uh, questions, comments, concerns? I want to go ahead and put the comment here. Any last words? Now we just awkwardly wait. And now we wait. That was in last week's Q&A. People are like, where's the Matthews Minute and all that? So what we're going to be doing... Um, uh, we're going to be doing rebuttals to each of the the episodes as they come out. Mm -hmm. um, this coming weeks is really, really good. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to always do them in this live format. This was just kind of a test just to see, yeah. you know, hey, would this be f more fun uh, than... Um, Sitting in the, the box. Yeah. And then if we don't, we're going to have a birthday party every weekend. So if we're going to do these live ones, we'll probably schedule them. And like have everything set up and ready to go at a certain time and let people yeah. know that like a day in advance. It's been kind of a busy weekend for us. Yeah. So we just wanted to try to get something out there. All right. I think. I think that may be it. I think we're good to go. Make sure I don't miss any questions. Scroll up, scroll up. Doesn't look like it. If you didn't get your question at this time, feel free to always just ask throw, it. Yeah. We'll be uh, adding. A, a weekly Q and A master spoilers post. I'm gonna this past week I did like a spoiler thread and then a master Q and A thread. I'm just gonna combine, combine that them, shit. Yeah. That way it's just one post, and I'll be up there all week for you to comment on and ask your questions and all that good stuff. And there'll be a lot of. I think there'll be this one should drum up some pretty cool interest. This next story is standalone. Yes, it is. So it's a uh, completely, you know. In the vein of Yellow Eyes and Shutter Love and that I'm kind of thing. I'm kind of nervous, though. Why? Because the whole cast is kids. <laughs> the whole cast is kids, and it's my first full production, production I did. So if you don't like the production, next week's Q&A, just yell at Amy. Like, I could not stand the way these conversation flows went in. <laughs> Actually, I have to blame the whole creative team because we vetted the whole thing. Yeah. All right. That's it. Goodbye. Bye, guys. All elements of Cyrenicide are copyright 2019 by Atrium Dynamics.